Hello gamers and welcome back to our next episode here on Solo Spelunking where we continue the adventure Reavers of Harkenbold. But before we jump right and straight into the action I would like to once again um, yeah, say a heartfelt welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm um, grateful and happy that you decided to, to stop by. And yeah, welcome and uh, I hope you, you enjoy the video. And um, yeah, we left off last time right in the middle of the action while our party of heroes consisting of Vincent de Vega, my player character, Brent Torsen, the leader of uh, or the elder or leader of the Torshold community and two of his best men and women Tamara the Huntress and Milbred. And we made our way into the Todwellow Caves to get rid of the Baliwak menace so that the, um, the fighters of Tor's Hold are free to join the rebellion against the Iron Circle. Um, yeah, uh, one little thing. Um, when I created my character, um, I was assuming basically that I would do all of my dungeon delving alone, so I implemented this Freydai mechanic. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not alone now, I'm with a party. So it might be that this D6 Freydai mechanic is a little bit overkill. And um, But I will keep it for now. I will keep it uh, for this run through the cave. And after that I will decide if it was, in my opinion, too easy or if it was uh, just right. And if it was too easy, I would rule that the fray die only comes into effect when I am alone and when I'm traveling with a party, I do not have access to my fray die. But this is just a thought that occurred to me. So um, I will see how this goes for this delve through the cave. I will keep my, my fray die. And um, yeah, maybe, or how, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I will need it and that will come in handy. So um, yeah, we triggered another encounter, two Baliwaks, two Baliwak warriors and a Baliwak yeah, mage or shaman appeared and uh, I made up some stats for him. So he's got five points of hit protection, but before he entered the combat or before he approached, of course, he prepared himself and cast the um, Baliwak equivalent of Mage Armor. So he's got a damage reduction of three because he's protected by an arcane uh, armor. He also, let me pick this up. Um, he also has um, yeah, some sort of, of arcane attack. Um, so he is able to, to hurl some arcane bolts um, dealing 1d8 points of damage and he can use this um, in ranged combat but also in melee without penalty because it's not really a ranged weapon. It's basically an attack spell. Um, yeah, so he is hanging back here and of course all of them have this rancid stench that surrounds them. So um, I would be well advised to, to keep my distance. All right, so we are in the first round of combat and I need to see um, which one of my heroes can act. So we all had, have to pass dexterity saves. I will start with my hero, with Vincent. And let's see, I got a dexterity of nine. Three, yes, so Vincent can act in the first round. Now, Bren Torsen, dexterity of eight. Four, yes, he can also act. Tamara the Huntress, dexterity of 11. Yes, she can act as well. And finally, Milbrit with dexterity of eight. Three, yes. All right, so all of my guys, my entire party can act and then the monsters can act and then we alternate. So this is good. We can all act. Um, all right, so what we do is we will 
we will hang back to let the archers do their work first because we want to avoid getting into this rancid stench area that surrounds these creatures because we learned this in our last close combat engagement where we basically had to to gather our strength to not throw up so um yeah I will move first and then I will attack because I need to combine my, my attacks. All right, so um, they exchange quick glances and decide to, to focus their fire on this creature here. But they will also, of course, um, yeah, increase the distance to, to them a little bit. So um, let me just check something here. So this is line of sight, one, two, three, four, five, six but more than eight squares. So we will move backwards and I flip my, my counter. So we will move backwards over to here, turn and over to here. And we will get out of the way here to be able to, to flank these guys or to, to engage if necessary, but first um, yeah, we try to to let the archers do their work. All right, so he moves back here and Vincent moves back here to get out of the way. So they will not attack this turn. And these two will focus their fire on this creature with um, a short bow and a light crossbow, which is d8 and a d6 damage roll. d8 for the right crossbow, d6 for the short bow. I will roll up here so that I do not mess up my pawns. Oh, look at this, 1-1. One, one. All right, so we both miss because they got a damage reduction of 1, so no damage, and so um, yeah, because of the dim light, uh, this cave is only illuminated by this glowing fungus. Uh, we miss. And now it's the Bullywog's turn. So the warriors, they don't have any um, any melee, uh, any ranged uh, attack, but they have decided that the archers are pretty dangerous because they could potentially um, be a threat to the mage. To the shaman so um, they will charge up and concentrate their efforts and attack Tamara the Huntress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in Cairn you can move uh, 40 feet which is eight squares so they can reach her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they charge up with their uh, move And the mage, he will also throw his arcane bolt at Tamara the Huntress, but I will rule that this attack is impaired because his allies are engaged with her in close combat. So um, it'll be only a d4. So and, and the warriors, they have d6. So I will roll d6, d6 and a d4 for damage and use the highest roll. And Tamara, she's got a damage reduction of one because of her leather armor. One, two, two. All right, so I'm lucky. So two is the highest number, which is reduced to one because of her armor. So she loses one point of hit protection. So she's down to four and is basically only graced by um yeah by the arcane bolt and and ducks the um the attacks of the baliwak warriors or dodges the attacks all right so now it's the hero's turn again and um yeah let's see um all right so Milbrit, turn this around first. 
Milbrit will continue shooting at the mage while we other guys we will assist um, we will assist Tamara the Huntress. Alright, so um, Milbrit he will stay where he is at and shoot his light crossbow poof, at the mage which is 1d8 of damage yes six points but it's reduced by three because of the mage armor to three he's got five points of hit protection so he takes three points of damage three points of hit protection damage so he's got two points of hit protection left and this white die is hit protection damage so he's got three points of hit protection damage so he um, holds up his hand and an arcane shield an arcane barrier forms around him in an instant and the bolt uh, hits the arcane barrier and falls to the ground so this is my cinematic interpretation of his hit protection all right, so um, yeah, that was this Milbrit's um, action. And now we need to yeah, fight these Baliwags. Um, Tamara, she's got to make... Um, so what we want to do is we want to gang up on this Baliwag here. So I got to move first because I have to roll all my attack dice together and, and use the highest one. But Tamara, she... Um, she needs to pass a save, a will saving throw, because she is starting her turn, it's the start of her turn then, in this rancid stench hour. We don't need to do this yet, because we are still far away, um, but she needs to. So, um, yeah, I will make her dexterity save, and see if she make a uh, willpower save, sorry, to see if he makes it. She's got a willpower of 10. No, she doesn't. So she is impaired for the upcoming, um, for the upcoming uh, battle round, whatever. Um, so I will move her, uh, turn her, because she will act now. And now uh, we get to move. I need to take a white um, circle here so that I um, am not attacked. But you know what? I, I'm not going to use the text of opportunity. I, I never really liked them because they made combat very static, and I think it's hard to um, to implement in Cairn if you just roll roll damage. I think this would be a little too much. So forget the text of opportunity. So we can just um, we move one, two, three. So we are carefully moving like so and ganging up on this this Baliwak. So she her attack is impaired, so she's attacking with 1d4 with her um, sword or with her um, yeah with her sword. So she um, drops her bow, gets out of her sword because she's engaged in melee. I'm using d6 plus uh, um, plus d8 because I'm attacking with longsword and dagger and Mirbrit is, um, no, sorry, Bren is using a d10. So that's quite a lot of damage dice. So we have 1d10. Let me get a d10. 1d10. We have uh, 1d8 for my longsword. 1d6 for my dagger. And a d4. Um, a d4 for Tamara, the Huntress's uh, dagger, and she is impaired. So let's see what we get. Oh, six, five, two, three. So we deal six points of damage, and uh, the Baliwak has a damage reduction of one, so this is five points. So this takes away all his hit protection, however, it does not trigger a critical damage save. So this Baliwak, he is um, yeah, in a tight spot. He's attacked from three sides and, and, and does his best to, to parry 
and and dodge the blows and um, yeah manages to fend off this first assault so now it's the body walks turn all right so um what are they doing they will be ganging up as well so this guy and this guy they will stay where they are and they will both attack Tamara the Huntress and and this shaman mage he will throw his arcane bolt um, at Milbrit because Milbrit is not in this uh, close combat engagement so this attack will not be impaired and to get a better better angle he will just move one square which is not a problem so I will resolve this first so he throws an arcane bolt dealing d8 damage at Milbrit who is unscathed at the moment all right six points of damage Milbrit has a damage reduction of two so that is four points taking his hit protection down to one mm, all right so Milbrit he he throws up his arms in a protective gesture and um, yeah and and turns his body so that his plate armor absorbs the brunt of the arcane bolt and now those two Baliwaks gang up on Tamara the Huntress and they deal the six points of damage Four, four, so this is four points and she's got uh, damage reduction one so three so she's still got one point of hit protection left she's at one point of hit protection so this is pretty good actually um, no critical damage save and this concludes this round so we start the next round and it is the hero's turn all right so Milbrit first because he will be again shooting at the shaman and um, yeah I, I resolve his attack first oops so he I think he was over here and or was he over here it doesn't matter so he's over here and he shoots 1d8 crossbow bolt at the shaman eight yes but it's reduced by three because of the mage armor or arcane shield so this is five points so this is two points of hit protection and three points of critical damage um, yeah three points of critical damage which is good because it triggers a strength save he's got a strength of eight the mage but now he's reduced to five let's see if he passes no he doesn't all right so he takes aim with his light crossbow and the mage he he gets up his hand and tries to conjure this arcane barrier in an instant but he's uh, too late and too weak so the bolt it goes right through and hits him square in the chest and he goes down and is out of the fight for now all right so now our three heroes um, first we all need yeah we all need to make a, a will saving throw first because of this this wrenched stench that these creatures emanate so Vincent is doing his will save And he succeeds with a two. Brent Torson doing his will save. He succeeds with a two. And Tamara the Huntress doing her will save. She succeeds with a four. So even though um, we 
we feel this urge to, to actually throw up because the stench is almost unbearable. We grit our teeth and, and, and um, yeah, fight this urge because adrenaline kicks in and, and we need to finish these creatures. So none of us is impaired and we all three gang up on this Bali. Uh, no, wait a minute. Um, Tamara and Vincent, we will both um, gang up on this Baliwag and Brent Horson will strike with his hammer at this Baliwag because we hope that we too can take this guy down. Alrighty. So, um, yeah, I'm activating and Tamara is activating and we um, I'm having d8 and d6 and she's got a d6 now because she's not impaired um, let me get another green d6 and we see what we get yes six all right so six points of damage it is reduced by one to five but hit protection is already gone, so five points of strength damage, and we trigger a critical damage save. All right, five points, and the Bullywug triggers a critical damage save. And he fails, nine, and he needed a maximum or highest he could have as a five. So uh, this guy goes down badly wounded, uh, stabbed in the back and the belly. And now Brent Torsen activates and hits with his hammer, um, attacks with his hammer. And I need a d10. Where's my d10 that I used before? Let's just take this one. And this is four points. All right, so reduced by one to three. So three points of hit protection damage. So this Bullywog is still standing strong. But um, yeah, he is not stupid. Um, like I said, I will not use opportunity attacks. It goes both ways. He sees himself cornered. So he will just um, yeah take off and flee back into the cave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and with his action takes another move. One, two, three, four, five, and he disappears out of our line of sight into the into the dark and damp caves. All right, damn. Quick, see if the mage is still alive. If he is, we could use him as a hostage, Brand says. Yeah, all right, I will do. Cover me. All right, so, um, Milbrit and Tamara the Huntress, they take up positions here to cover this area. And I will check the shaman if he is still still breathing and alive. And I will give it I will give it a now usually by Karen rules um, regarding PCs, I think if, it's, if, you, if you're not tended to within an hour you die, so he should should still be alive, but I'm not using the same rules for, for NPCs, but I'm giving it a 50-50 chance and I'm using percentile die. So 50% that he is still alive. 94. No, he's not. All right. So, um, yeah, I quickly, I look at him and quickly check him and um, look at Bren and just shake my head. No luck here. Damn. Could have been maybe a good bargain ship. All right, everybody. We can't, we can't let the momentum slip. We need to press on. Yeah, exactly. So 
So I will just remove him and I will remove him because he's dead as well to get the map less cluttered. All right. So let me scout ahead and you take up defensive positions here. Maybe I can lure whatever enemies I just cover back here into this open area. I don't know how this cave looks behind this bend. Yeah, all right, so we take up position here, here and here. No, wait, uh, he needs to go over here. So yeah, we take up positions here and I will be right behind you. All righty, so let's, um, let's see what we can find here. All right, so I move around this bend, he follows, and I will resolve this encounter and um, I give it a 75% chance that there actually is an encounter. 75%. 37%. Yes, of course, there is an encounter and um, yeah, it is um, again a Baliwak, um, Baliwak party but uh, this time or they do not have an they do not have an a mage with them this time so it's only three three warriors one mm, where are the other ones here two and And three. All right. So let's put all of them like this. And the guys that acted are turned around. And now we need to make again dexterity saves. So, um, yeah. I spot them. And I alert my, my companions. Incoming. We got enemies. I got contact. Three of them. Moving in. All right, get ready. All right, so, um, yeah, he actually could attack from here. But first we will see if we can act in the first round of combat. So. Brent Torsen, dexterity save. 19, he can't act. So um, I will just, because he can't act, I will just turn him like so, indicating that he's already acted, even though he didn't, because he can't act. Now it is Vincent. So I'm making my dexterity save. 17, no. I'm also not able to act. Tamara the Huntress. She is able to act and Milbrit. Milbrit seven, deck thirty eight. Yes. All right. So these these guys they can act, which is good because they're in the back, so they can actually, um, yeah, flank them from from here. We can't act. So it's uh, Milbrit and Tamara, then the monsters, and then we are in the regular rounds. All right. So um, he signals Tamara over here. We can take him by surprise. All right. So um, he needs to get into position over here. And he, but he will also get some more distance between him and the, the creatures. So he will move over to here. And she got a speed of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So she will go over here. And she moves up to here. So they have moved and activated, but they still get to resolve their attack and they will of course focus their fire on this warrior here in the back. 
So we have d6 and d8 for light crossbow and short bow. Three and four, so it's four points of damage. Reduced by one, it's three points of damage. So this Baliwak takes three points of hit protection damage. And um, yeah, he he gives off or he gives an alarming quark to alert um, the other guys to our presence. And now it's the Baliwak's um, turn. Mm. So um, yeah, because they are actually closer and they don't want to increase the distance to the shooters, they will focus on these guys down here. So, um, this guy, like I said, I'm not using a text of opportunity now. Um, he just charges up here, takes his damage with him. And this guy moves down here as well. And this guy... moves down here so they can all three focus their their attacks on Tamara the Huntress and I do not have a good feeling about this um, yeah one thing I was thinking about maybe should I give them the opportunity to regain their hit protection after the last encounter but I figured it needs you still need some I mean in the in the rule book it says a zip of water and a short rest uh, restores hit protection but leaves you exposed or vulnerable and in my mindset this this is all happening pretty quick and they don't really have time they want to like press the the momentum press the attack they don't really have the time to yeah, to, to, to take the rest they need to recover all of their hit protection. Um, so this is what I, in my mind, um, what my thought process is. Might be that this is um, too difficult because the system usually expects that you regenerate your hit protection between combats, but uh, I will see how this goes I mean they're not alone they can be tended to and uh, yeah maybe we need to um, to rest up a little after this combat um, we'll see maybe we um, we need to retreat but for now let's see how just how this goes so those three attack um, Tamara the Huntress and they all deal 1d6 so I'm rolling 3d6 and using the highest one Maybe I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm sort of lucky. So one, three, three. So three is the highest. Reduced by one to two, which um, is one point of hit protection and one point of strength damage. So she does take some strength damage. She is hit, so she needs to make a critical, critical damage save. And she's got a strength of eight now reduced because of the damage. So let's see. Thirteen. Ah no she doesn't make it. So um yeah she she tries to, to block the attacks but um is too slow and is stepped in the side uh, and uh, and needs to retreat so she goes down on one knee uh, and uh, uh, retreats now she's down on, on one knee. Alright so now it's our turn again. So we turn this around. Everybody can act and the heroes we go first. All right, damn. So um yeah. Um what do we do? This guy he is you know, he's not really wounded because this is only a protection, but he's somewhat exhausted. Um she needs to be tended to, but we still got time. So I think... I think... 
Vincent and Bran, we will try to gang up on this creature here. Let's see if I can move there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I can. So I will of I will move down here first. So movement. And now let's see, I will probably not be able to reach him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. No, I need to take a double move. So he needs he takes a double move for next round, Bren. Meaning only I can attack this guy because he needed to double move and Milbrit he will drop his light crossbow to get his mace out to attack this Baliwak here so he will not move so I already turn him and now we resolve the attacks Bran can't attack I will attack with d8 and d6 fighting two-handed with my longsword and dagger Three reduced by one that is two two points of hit protection damage that does not really oh I forgot my freight I, I I said that I wanted to use them okay um yeah I do this um then after I resolve this attack so now he with his mace also deals one d eight points of damage with his mace attacks this creature here the bullywalk oh. But he starts his turn adjacent, so he needs to, to make his um, saving throw because of the acid stench. So Milbrit, willpower 10, 11, damn, he doesn't make it. So he is impaired, so he, yeah, he throws up, <laughs> but tries still to, to hit him. 3 is reduced by 1 to two, so that takes care of his hit protection, but does not trigger a critical critical damage save. So <laughs> even though he has to, to throw up and is pretty sick, he manages um, to, to press on and um, yeah, and, and um, press the attack and, and get this guy to, 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 um, to dodge, to block, but it exhausts him. All right, so now, like I said, um, I will use the Freight Eye to see how this goes. Now I'm using the Freight Eye, which means I can deal another D6 of damage as a separate thing. And I will, of course, focus on the guy. I'm, yeah, one, which is negated by the armor, so no more damage. All right, so now it's the, the Baliwax turn. All right, so... Um, Let's see, how do they divide up their attacks? Um, hmm. So these two, they will gang up on Milbrit. So I resolve these two first. So this is 2d6 of incoming damage versus Milbred. Oh, five. Reduced by his armor to three, which takes care of his last point of hit protection, but also two points of strength damage, taking his strength to nine, but triggering a critical damage save. Come on, Milbred. Yes, four. Milbrit presses on. Yes, thank you. Ha. So, and now we got this guy left, and he will. Um, I will give it a roll. One, two, three. Bren, four to six. Vincent, or me. So, four to six, it's Vincent. And it is Vincent. So, this guy, he will attack me. Because, yeah, I attacked him, obviously. And he will deal 1d6 points of damage. I'm in pretty good shape. Because I was not attacked. 
so far, three, which is reduced to one thanks to my breastplate. So I am down to four points of pit protection. All right, next round. Turn this around and the heroes, they act. All right, Milbred, he needs to get rid of, of his uh, attacker. So um, he will use his mace because uh, he will use his mace. So he moves. He will use his mace and attack this guy with 1d8 uh, points of damage. Please give me a good roll. Please give me a good roll. Mm. Ah, four. Mm. Semi-good roll. But this guy only has or it has no hit protection left. So this is three points of strength damage because of the armor. Taking his strength down to seven but triggering or forcing a critical damage save. And this is the important part. All right, take my enemy d20. And eight, yes, this is not enough because his strength is reduced to seven. All right, so I just rule that when they take critical damage, they're dead because they're basically minions and not um, yeah, shamans or lieutenants or whatever. So, um, oh, damn, wait, 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 wait. All right, so v rewind, retcon. I don't want to cheat. I have to make, of course, the, um, the rancid air save first. All right, so um, let me see, willpower. So if I make the save, I rule that this is... Um, What happened and if I don't make the save I have to reroll the attack. Six. Yes, willpower ten. So alright, so this is how it, it happened. So uh, I I fight on the urge to throw up again. Uh, uh, these disgusting creatures and with a backhand swing um I use all my strength that I can muster and a back heck swing and the, he is a little bit too slow getting up his, his trident to block and the spike mace pff, uh, smashes into his skull and crushes it and a green blue brownish mush of of meat pff, uh, splatters uh, against the wall so this is uh, rated r <laughs> and he is dead all right so this was milbred thank god but he's out of hit protection and wounded all right so now because this guy is still in a position to threaten Milbrit, Brent Torsen with his um, large two-handed warhammer will attack this guy, hopefully taking him down to to give Milbrit some more breathing room. So he uses his warhammer, uh, dealing 1d10 points of damage, swinging with both of his hands. Uh. Uh, one. Ugh, come on, this you gotta be kidding me. All right, so zero damage <laughs> because um, yeah, I swing wildly, but um, this guy just takes a, a side step and the the swing goes wild. So that was him, and now me, Vincent, I, um. Use, of course, sword and dagger, two-handed, the 86 to hopefully finish off this guy here. And then I do have my frayed eye. Oh, but, ah, damn. So he missed, so that doesn't matter. But I still, of course, need to make the rancid air saving throw. Willpower, I got nine. Oh, I don't make it. So my attacks are impaired. It's d4 and d4 because, of course, I can use two dice because I got two weapons, but they're all impaired. Mm. All right, so let's see. d4 and d4. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> 2 and 1. So of course I take the 2, which is reduced to 1 because of the armor, meaning this guy has 3 points of hit protection damage. He's not really damaged. And now it is the Bollywog's turn. Uh, this didn't go well. Oh, oh, wait, sorry. Freydai. I can use the Freydai and the Freydai is not impaired because it's not an attack, it's just the Freydai. So I do have one more chance. Five, which is four. Um, so four points. So two points of hit protection, taking him to zero and two points of strength damage, triggering a critical damage save. So this could save the day if he fails his save. He's got all stats are 10, minus 2, 8. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. And he rolls a 1. So even though uh, I managed to wound him, he is still standing and angry. So uh, now it's the Bollywog's turn. So this guy, he will focus on Milbrit because he sees that he's already wounded and he deals 1d6 points of damage. But Milbrit has good armor, maybe... Ah, oh, 5 points of damage. Minus 2 is 3 points, so his strength, he takes 3 points of strength damage. It goes from 9 to 6. And triggers a save. Yes, 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 a two. Ha <laughs> ha, Milbrit, he's such a tough guy. So Milbrit oh, oh, grits his teeth and despite the wrenched stench and also the... Um, and also the uh, injuries that he's already sustained, he manages to to stay on his feet. All right, and this Bollywog is of course attacking me because I have been wounding him. And um, yeah, so he is attacking with 1d6 points of damage. <laughs> six minus two is four which brings me to zero hit protection but thankfully i'm still standing so now this is getting really interesting ah, it's the next round it is the hero's turn and i think we should probably maybe retreat. Um, now I forgot about this guy. I think, uh, I think he's taken three points of strength damage and made his save because I took the die away. So I think this is, was the situation. I think they were both out of hit protection, but this guy managed his save with a one, which is still here. And this guy, yeah, it, it was reduced to seven. And this guy um, also uh, made his save and got hit protection damage, uh, wound damage. All right. So, um, yeah. Do we retreat? I think we should actually. Um, because this guy, Milbrit, is wounded. She's wounded. And we don't know how much is still ahead of us. Um all right, so we, I think we we do a fighting retreat. All right, so it is our turn. And um, yeah, we do our actions first and then our move. And depending on how our actions go, it'll be a fighting retreat or <laughs> just a normal retreat. All right, so I do um, Milbrit first, because Milbrit, he needs to get away, and he will mm, first make his save to see um, his willpower save, willpower 10, 
because of the rancid stench. Damn, I'm an idiot. Why he should have moved away already and, and oh, I'm such an idiot. Once, I don't know, once I'm locked in melee combat, I got this tunnel vision. I mean, he could have moved away and, and used his crossbow, but all right, now I'm thinking of it. Now it's it's too late. Damn, but he makes his willpower safe, meaning he is not impaired. So he will attack now with all his the ferocity he can muster. D8 damage, uh, three, which is two which takes him to five strength damage, but triggers a critical damage save. Hopefully he fails it. Oh no, he doesn't. He rolls it too. <laughs> so this guy is still standing. Uh, so Milbert, he can't believe it. I mean, pff, oh, he hit him in the side, but he uh, is so full of, of adrenaline that that he stands, but now it's it's retreating time. We gotta go, Milbert says. Regroup, uh, and he goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, somebody, uh, take Tamara. I can't. I'm too weak. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, this will be. Uh, more or less a fighting retreat so Bren he does not attack because he needs his action to actually carry Tamara so he retreats one two picks her up as an action takes her um, wraps his arm around her or throws her over the shoulder two three four five six seven eight ah. all right let's go ah. so he's got her over her over his shoulder and now Vincent, he can move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He could uh, take a double move, but he. No, wait. If he if if I'm not taking a double move, I might as well attack still and use my freight. I all right. So. Yeah, I try to, to thin out uh, the enemy field a little. So let's see if I am impaired because of this wrenched stench. Make my willpower save. Ah, yes, I make it seven. All right, so I'm not impaired. So um, I attack d8, d6 against this guy who has already taken real damage, strength damage. Five. That's good. That is four points of strength damage, six points of strength damage, and triggers a save. And he now he only has got strength. A four. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was a one. Uh, it was a one. He's still standing. I can't believe it. Damn. All right. But I thank God I got the freight eye. So I will use the freight eye. And I was thinking about not using it, stupid me. All right, so freight eye. Five. All right, this is four. So this now finally kills him. So I take all the strength I can muster. And um, yeah, with one, uh, I faint and... and uh, cause him to to drop his guard and then uh, I twist the the dagger in my in my hand and thrust it into his belly and he dies Ugh. and now I gotta get out one two three four five six seven eight fighting retreat uh, all right and now it's the Bollywog's turn all right so he's also wounded and and pretty wounded and he's alone so we are on the retreat, so he will not um, yeah, sacrifice himself in a suicide mission. I mean, they their goal was to repel the invaders in their eyes, which is us. <laughs> so he will also retreat back into the cave to get his wounds tended to and uh, to reform and regroup. So we need to get out of the cave. So Bren is carrying Tamara uh, and we managed to get out. Uh, and yeah, make our way into the woods where we 
then take a short rest, have a drink and tend to, to our wounded. But um, our hit protection regenerates, but critical damage does not. And we are the, guy, the ones that have taken real strength damage are actually pretty wounded or seriously wounded. So uh, we need first to, to get back to, to Tor's hold to see um, a healer. And this will conclude this session. Um, yeah, it was pretty combat heavy and role playing light, but this is how it is sometimes. Um, yeah, some departing thoughts. I still think that this mechanic that you just roll damage without an attack is, is very unique and I really like it. It really gives a sense of urgency to the combat and really um, yeah, forces you to, yeah, to, to think and, and see how you combine attacks and whatever. And, um, yeah, and, and as you can see, I'm sometimes in, in, in some sort of tunnel vision. I mean, if I don't use the text of opportunity, I could have moved away earlier and then attacked from the distance but um yeah it is how it is and um yeah it's also i mean in the in the um in the f fictional world i mean he dropped his crossbow to get his mace out because they're in in melee i mean maybe it wasn't possible i don't know but um yeah we still need to get back to the caves and um clear it out um so maybe they will reinforce their numbers, but then again, they also do not have unlimited uh, Bali wax. So um, there's of course one more encounter left, um, which will be some sort of boss battle because this is what the Harken Bolt adventure also includes. Um, but I will determine randomly if, if there are reinforcements um, posted here. So, yeah, I will see you guys hopefully next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And, yeah, I will see you next time when it gets or goes back into the Tortuelo Caves. And, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend, and bye-bye.